Philadelphia Union. We're going to talk about that. USMNT. Welcome everybody into today's edition of PHLY Union Podcast. I am one of your hosts, JP Sapata. Tyler Zuli is behind the glass. And of course, join as always with the lovely Renee Washington. Renee, we're talking about a win in MLS play today. How you feeling? <laughs> you know, when we left this show last week, I remember saying, I could see the score being like, Anything. 3-1, one nothing, you know, 2 nothing. It was 3-1 in favor of the union. And, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to take credit or anything. I did post a post saying manifesting wins with my union jersey on Saturday. And then they won on Saturday. Renee's our lucky charm. That's me. all we need. It was not me. But I am so happy because we finally got to win. I just feel like, you know, when you win, everything's like, this is lighter. Yes. I feel like I can smile now. I feel like, you know, we're, we were all down in the dumps and it's great. Like, the, it feels lighter in here. <laughs> it feels like the, we're at the rainbow at the end of the storm. If anyone thought before <laughs> Saturday night's late, by the way, shouts to all you guys staying up late for that game because that was a late one. But if anyone thought before Saturday's late night game that the Union were going to go in and win, even my optimistic ass was like, maybe a draw. But the thing is, it was a 3-1 three, three, one. One win. It was convincing. It was. 16 players traveled to Oregon, and that's the performance they gave us. With, like, a last-minute signing of Andrew Rick, and <laughs> that's I was like, oh, this is where we're going with. Um, the bench was, like, Matt Real, Andrew Rick. They were the – and then it was uh, – you had though you had no bench. Chris Donovan was one, and I was like, "Oh, it feels like club soccer all over again, like youth soccer when you would go to a tournament with sixteen players because people were hurt or whatever." Um, and I remember we were talking like you were even mentioning the union could score goal, kind of pack it in, maybe grind out a one one win. We were we were pretty pessimistic, and I know Jim mentioned it like this team thrives and people count them out, and he's been in the hot seat. The team's been in the hot seat. They go to Portland, and who would have thought three goals? Yeah. They finally no. score. They, I mean, I would love to see a shutout, but I'm not. Beggars can't be choosers. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm good. I'd rather give up a goal and win 3-1 than have a shutout, and you don't. So, overall, wow. It was worth staying up late. Yeah. I didn't make it. Mm-mm. I'm not yeah, going to lie. I, I can't tell a lie. I don't like to lie. I like to be honest with people. I fell asleep at the end. Yeah, can we, can we get those games a little bit earlier? A little late. Like, geez, Louise. There. But no, like it, it, it's it's crazy yeah. because th- where this team has been this year, like it's funny because we've been kind of down on them. We have. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but they are actually in a solid spot. They get their first win. It was extremely convincing. And, and Renee, like I told you before the Austin game, I wanted to see some energy. I wanted to see no. s- just see some anger because you should have been angry the way CCC ended. We didn't get that. But who would have thought that a week later we would have gotten that performance because they were searching for blood and they got that. And that was a yes. huge first win that they got there. As we got people chiming on in. What's going on, guys? The comment section is open. Drop your comments. <laughs> I know everyone's got thoughts here today. Hit that like button as well. We got oh, our girl Jillian starting it off here. I was cautiously optimistic. Didn't expect three goals, though. And I think that is a sentiment by a lot of Union fans. I don't think anyone expected three goals. Yeah. They were three Marvels. Union style goals, I would say. It was it was definitely really good to see for sure there. It was. And honestly, look, this team has struggled to score goals. This team has struggled. First of all, most of the MLS games, they've been down playing catch up mm-hmm. and scoring in the final minute and scoring in stoppage time to tie the game up. We haven't seen them. I'm trying to think because Sporting Kansas City, they're down. Austin, they were down. Mm-hmm. No, Austin, they were up one nothing, and then it swung 2-1. That was the only game they actually scored first and were up. <clears throat> and another problem, Saprisa, Austin has been holding on to that lead. And not only did they take the one nothing lead, even with Portland on the attack, they had a lot of really good chances, a lot of good chances. And the Union off the post, clearing it off the goal line, you know, whatever it took to keep them from scoring, to then get that second goal, that insurance goal, and then not be done and get that third goal, that's even something, JP, I know we've talked about here on the show as an area, when you are on playing on the front foot and you 
you are already up. You got to capitalize, strike while the iron's hot, whatever metaphor you want to use. Mm-hmm. Put the ball away, essentially, to keep that team at an arm's length. And they did that. I mean, that was a game that could have swung with how Portland was playing. It could have gone either way. And even up one nothing, you were never fully comfortable. Right. Uh, the you know Portland had the better chances. The Timbers outshot them, outpossessed them, everything in the first half. But the Union had the most important stat, and so that's something we've seen so many times the other way. So I agree with Jillian. Like I was, well, I wasn't optimistic, but I wasn't expecting three goals either. I was kind of, but I was kind of going into it. I remember saying it right here in this exact same spot. <laughs> This is a great game to turn the corner yeah. because you didn't have, there was no pressure. If the union went in there and lost three, four, nothing, we'd be annoyed. Don't get me wrong, but we'd be like, okay, you're missing six starters. We expect this. You only traveled with 16. One of, you know, you had to make a last minute signing because you didn't even have a goalie to bring in Andrew Rick and bring him up. You know, we would have understood. We would have been, it would have made sense. So we were even talking about going into this weekend. This is a chance to right the ship. Mm -hmm. There's no pressure, no expectations to just go in there, play some good soccer, compete, work hard, and let the chips fall where they may. And shout out to the guys that uh, stepped up because I I liked that. I liked the group. I liked the way they competed. I liked the way they defended. There were definitely some areas that you still can tweak. But that's, I don't want to go as far as say the best that they've looked this season, but... So here's the thing. Pretty close. Here's the thing with this type of performance, though, because I have seen now, like, and this is the constant, like, reoccurring theme is, like, we're running it back for third straight year. Yeah. I have seen over the past three years where the union get to a stale place, <laughs> you know, line up a bunch of draws, get eliminated from CCC or US Open Cup, and then they put out a great performance like this, and we're all like, they're back. We're, Don't we're, do it to us, JP, where you're going with back. this. <laughs> but, like, it, it is hard, because, like, look, I, this is stuff that I, I've seen before. And the difference about this one, though, I will give you, is that... Guys who are young and you didn't expect to step up, step up, stepped up in a big way, which we'll talk about in a second. But this is where I'm at with it. So this was a great performance. Oh no! But Renee, we have seen this before. Are you? Why do you have to do this to us? Uh, because we have to. I'm be just honest enjoying with living in this very fluffy world of like, yay! Now all of a sudden, I can be irrational and think the union are gonna like win it all or something. Like, don't. Be re- don't be realistic. Don't bring us back down to <laughs> earth. Give us a moment. We we definitely have a lot of pods to talk about, but where I'm at with this, I want to see this going forward. I want, especially like this was a tough stretch of play. Okay, fair. And we'll, we'll talk about Minnesota this week because that's another tough test, but let's see this more consistently. But let, let's get to some of the pods here. So the big challenge in this one was obviously traveling with 16 players. Correct. A lot of key pieces were out in this one, including Andre Blake. So... The lineup was a very interesting. We weren't really <laughs> sure what to think of it. Now, you can call it a 4-4-2 diamond. You can call it a 4-3-3. It, honestly, we saw both on Saturday night. We did. Oliver Zemla got the start in goal. Wagner, Elliott, Glezes, and Baizo as your four in the back. Rafinella, Bedoya, and Sullivan will call them as the holding midfielders. Carranza was lined up centrally with U- Ua and Anderson as those two wingers. So right off the bat there, Renee. Jim mm-hmm. got a little bit creative there, obviously. Like it? Yeah, well, you don't have a lot of options, and, and I, that's what we kind of line up. But what did you, because, like, for me, like, there was parts in that first half where I saw 4-3-3, but then they kind of switched back to that 4-4-2. Okay. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay in the fluffy side and the, the flowery side. I love that we have to have this conversation. I love that we don't know what formation they were in because that's, that's how you're supposed to play soccer. It shouldn't be where, okay, oh, we know exactly where Marcus Anderson's going to line up and run, and his runs are going to be the exact same. Soccer is not track. You don't just run in straight lines. You should be all over. You should be interchanging. So this is a great – okay, keep this coming. <laughs> this is exactly what I've been wanting from the union. Whatever the formation is, let it be fluid and interchanging. You saw times – Marcus Anderson I, was one of the bright spots I took from the oh, game. Oh, yeah. All over. He was tracking back, defending. He was making runs. He was, he was getting stuck in on tackles and playing physical. He was playing aggressive. But he was all over, not just the, like, left flank. Sometimes he was getting more essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeremy Raffanello, another one. You saw him getting end line, getting sometimes as the highest player or the widest player. There was so much more movement. And I wonder what sparked the movement. What was, you know, what's been blocking the movement? Is it because we had some different personnel out there? So I think it was, I mean, a different, as you mentioned, uh, write-ups and things had different, you know, per- thoughts on what they thought the formation was, 4-4-2 with a traditional flat midfield versus a 4-3-3. Yeah. I think it was a 4-4-2, um, but I just think that it was, it was interchanging, and that's what yeah. you need from, like, dynamic movement where 
we're just attacking as a unit, defending as a unit. You're not really stuck in a position. You're not, I always compare it to like the dog and electric fence. You can't play soccer that way. Where like all of a sudden you just stop. Oh, this is my line because now I'm crossing over into the center midi spot or into the forward spot. Nope, you just got to be a free flow and break through that electric fence. Just run all over the place. So I don't know what the formation was, to be honest. I think it was a 4-4-2 if I had to guess. I know I keep saying that, but I think most importantly, we saw aggression, movement, intensity, interchanging. That's how soccer is supposed to be. Not yeah, really. for the most part, I did yes. see the 4-4-2, but I think... <laughs> What you saw on Saturday was the tactics really outshine here for the union. Now, look, Portland, new manager. They have some new pieces, yeah. including Jonathan Rodriguez, who we did see the debut of for the Portland Timbers. But, I mean, like, you got to give the kudos to Jim because Jim, out, he out-dueled uh, Phil Neville. This was a chess match, and, and that you saw that from Jim. One, one of the big things that Jim talked about in Friday's presser was obviously Diego Charra. He's one of the best midfielders that we have mm -hmm. in this league for a long time, too. And they, it really, you really saw, especially in that first half, they really wanted to stifle that midfield, especially yeah. Chara. Yeah. Alejandro Bedoya or Rafinha or even Quinn Sullivan, at all times, you had an eye on Diego Chara. And they, and if he had the ball, everyone suffocated him. And you mm -hmm. saw that. In general, that press was so good. They really didn't give Portland much chances. Portland were trying to attack centrally, but it mm -hmm. wasn't working because the Union were so spot on. You saw them try to move out on those outside channels. They It was funny because they weren't really trying to chip over the top either, but they were yeah. trying to move on those outside channels. So I just think general, genuinely the tactics in this game was just perfect. And that's that was a big piece of it. And everyone just was able to just play that free-flowing style mm -hmm. soccer that you were talking about. I love seeing Marcus Anderson and Quinn Sullivan switching back and forth. But when you're talking about awaken in this attack you got players who who, who want to score who want to Correct. be part of that uh, uh, high-flying attack let them go out there and let them play a little soccer that's all yeah. it is i know in the chat joe you're mentioning how jim said post game it was a flat 4-4-2 four, four, and yeah i've been part, seeing that it was like a 4-4-2 four, four, but i think the most important piece is they didn't stay in that you know and yeah I, I read that i saw that but they didn't stay in that they they were constantly moving and let's let's be honest it wasn't like the union dominated this game you know you didn't look at this game and they just from the opening minute outshot portland and had the better possession because they didn't actually and they didn't win any of the any of the stats except for the goals again most important but <laughs> the timbers outshot them had less chances on target though the possession heavily in favor of Portland, 73% to the Union's 27%. Their passing, their accuracy, everything was in favor of Portland. But at the end of the day, this was finally the chance where we could say the Union's attackers wanted it more because Portland had chances. They had, even in the opening minutes, that chance that Oliver Zemla deflected out, falls down, balls in the box. They, they were missing the target. Some of those chances, it's like, if you put that on frame, it's a goal. Mm -hmm. If you go on and like shoot that to score, it's a goal. If you finish your run, it's a goal. But there were a lot of times the ball was in and around the six. And, you know, the union you saw clearing the ball off the goal line, Oliver Zemla, Jacob Glesnitz, whoever it was, different guys just sacrificing their body, you know, not stopping, seeing the play all the way through to clear it out. And even that was a difference. We've seen at times where it looks like they kind of just hit a wall and get flat or stop playing. So I loved the fact that this was a good game on both sides. It was, and, and to see how the union, even despite giving up really good chances, having the weaker of possession, you score a goal off of a free kick, off of transition, um, off of a corner kick too, you know, where you just capitalize on the moments where Portland was flat, caught sleeping, and you're able to put the ball away. And that's that's the difference too. It's not the better possession. It's who wants it more. And Saturday finally looked like a group, a whole group. Kai Wagner has been bringing that. Julian Caranz has been bringing that. But you saw even more from, from Ua, but, you know, it was it was Marcus Anderson, Jeremy Raffanello, Quinn, Quinn Sullivan getting forward. Olivier Mbizo was just solid. The defense finally looked solid, to be honest. Like, okay, again, Portland had a lot of good chances because there were a lot of, like, <gasps> moments. But overall, I saw numbers retreating back. I saw them not giving up on the ball. I saw the effort there. Like, you're in the MLS. There's going to be – you're playing the best of the best. There's going to be players that break you down. And sometimes it's just better offense. It's not a matter of bad defense. But overall, you saw the fight there, JP. Yeah. Like, that's what we've been wanting. Just the, You don't even have to win every game. Just compete and work hard and 
fight all the way through, and that's what we saw Saturday. Look, I always say this. If the Union are going to be a successful team, like you're not going to play this slow style, no. pos heavy possession type of stuff. No, the Union play with high intensity for 90 minutes, and they will suffocate the crap out of you. And then that's <laughs> how they get a lot of their scoring opportunities too. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm so happy with Saturday because they, they went back. Look, look. Obviously, it wasn't in their favor when you when yeah. you're missing so many key pieces like that. But you stick to your laurels, and it got it got you the win, and that was the difference. And Renee, you know what the difference could be with a simple house buying experience to a oh, frustrating house buying okay, experience? Okay, JP, what that's, is that? Tell me. It's with our friends over at Mortgage CS, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our sponsor today, Mortgage CS. What does it stand for? Stands Mortgage CS stands for Concierge Service. It is an independent mortgage broker. And ladies and gentlemen, they are available in California, Colorado, D.C., Delaware, Florida, Maryland, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Virginia, Washington. So they are all over. I know we got fans all over the country here. And listen, guys, they are here to educate and empower you. As we all know, house buying is not easy. I just went through it a year and a half ago, and <laughs> I can tell you going through mortgages is not fun. So why not get a, a service here that has exceptional customer service and is here for you, ladies and gentlemen. And right now, look. They are offering some refinancing options right now, including rate and term refinances for rate payment and reduction or cash out refinances as well. So definitely something to check out, especially guys, we are in spring too. The housing market, a lot of people are expecting that those, those rates are going to be coming down. So why not check out Mortgage CS right now and get started? And you, the thing is, is you don't have to go ahead and buy a house or go into a mortgage right now. What you can do is just ask them some simple questions. If you're watching live right now, on the bottom of the screen, you will see right now the CEO, Ben Sucker, his, his cell phone number. So you can either call or text them, not only about house buying, but you can ask them, what did you think about that Saturday performance buyer Philadelphia? Union? That was a pretty good one. You can also email Ben at Ben at MortgageGS.com. Again, that's Ben at MortgageGS.com. And of course, right now you can check out MortgageGS, MortgageGS.com slash P-H-L-Y to get started, ladies and gentlemen. This advertisement is not a commitment to lend or extend credit. Mortgage GS is an equal housing opportunity mortgage broker. All loans are subject to a credit approval. Certain restrictions may apply. Company NMLS ID 1464766. And again, visit MortgageGS.com for more information. Don't be a sucker. Call Ben Stucker. <laughs> <laughs> Got a trademark that, Renee. I think that's, I think that's what their new tagline needs to be. Um, I actually just shot my hair tie off. So thankfully I didn't accidentally shoot anybody with it. So <laughs> I don't know if anybody was paying attention, but I looked really, I was like, <gasps> <laughs> oh, it's good. Um, but yeah, you know what doesn't have to catch you by surprise and actually can change your life in a great way? It's Olipop. Olipop is the world's first functional soda with a classic soda taste and also the benefits of plant based fiber. They've got prebiotics and they've got other botanical ingredients to support your gut health. You want to make sure you're feeling good. Feel good, eat good, drink good. And at Olipop, you can drink very well with their new kind of soda, just two to five grams of sugar and nine grams of fiber per can. And they also are available in a lot of different spots to buy them. You can shop for Olipop online. You can shop at almost 30,000 retailers nationwide, including Wawa. That's right. For all of us that are fortunate to have Wawa <laughs> nearby, you can buy some Olipop at a Wawa near you. They actually just launched uh, the partnership with Wawa, so you can go check that out. And with Olipop, they have a lot of different flavors for you that provide you a chance to drink some refreshing soda. Yes. And so over, we've he here had a chance to try them ourselves, and you can too. Get those nostalgic flavors. Vintage cola, classic root beer, orange squeeze. They've got a classic grape doesn't love a grape soda. Hell yeah. Strawberry vanilla, cream soda, root beer, cherry cola. Um, did I say classic grape? Because, yeah, that's my favorite. So, yeah, over to Olipop, you can get some great flavors. Plus, did you know, JP and Tyler, that two out of three Americans say they suffer from digestive issues? 95% mm, of Americans are not getting the daily recommended amount of fiber. Well, Olipop changes that. So, great flavors, great for your gut, and giving you all the fiber and prebiotics that you need. So check out Olipop today. Again, you can shop online or in 30,000 different stores nationwide. Wawa, Target, Sprouts, Wegman, ShopRite, uh, GoPuff. And you can use the code PHLY20 for 20% off of your next Olipop order. Now that discount only applies to one-time orders, not subscriptions. But Olipop, again, sold online on Amazon, in stores. And you can use that code PHLY20 to get 20% off your next Olipop order. <laughs> <laughs> there it is all the trademarks that i, I was trying to get the pop it. in 
I love it. Guys, I listen, that, listen that. I, I, I will always say, you know, <laughs> gut health is extremely important. So listen, why not with soda and gut health? It's, that sounds like a great combination right there. I like gut health. It's important. It is me. important, guys. It is definitely <laughs> important. All right. Let's get let's get back to the pitch here. Renee. So obviously this was a great performance. So the MLS today announced the the all, the starting 11 for the match week this past week. Jim was the coach. Woo! Julian Carranza, obviously, Woo. with two goals, two really good goals as well. And Oliver Zemla. We have a goalie contract. No, I'm just kidding. Kidding, okay, kidding, kidding. No, but in all seriousness, though, <laughs> Oliver, this is now what? The third or fourth start we've had with Zemla. And every single start, I see him improving and getting more. That's some key part. He's getting mm-hmm. more comfortable. Obviously, this is a guy who's played some key minutes with Louisville the past couple seasons. Yep. And so now he's in a he's in, he's in a higher level, and mm-hmm. I mean, what what pressure than being behind one of the greats of all time in this league? So, I genuinely was impressed the way he played on Saturday. He stood yeah. tall, like you mentioned. Portland has a lot of good opportunities, and he looked very comfortable in between the pipes there. He did, and the notes that I had for him uh, was that he had some good reaction time. Yes. He seems like he's got good hands. A couple times he does give up some rebounds, like that early chance that you'd love to see if he can try to like catch that. Yeah. But you're also, I'm, first of all, I was I was never a goalie. That was one position I could not play. You have like 0.2 seconds to react. Literally. So for him to even get a glove on that and redirect it is great. Now can he, in those times you can't cleanly catch it, at least knock it out of a dangerous spot instead of having it drop back into the mix. Because we did see, I think it was a Sporting Kansas City. No, did he play that game? One of the, one of the goals he gave up earlier this season was off of him rebounding it i'm trying to like think back now rebounding it and it falling right to the foot of a of an attacker you want to try to make sure you're at least knocking it out yeah but his size his wingspan his hands his reaction time he seems very springy um very very nice to see how well he's come into the mix and like you mentioned i mean already he's got in this in this early start of 2024 played in three games so far in those three games he's been uh able to rack up some good statistics you know he's had no, if I could find the statistics, that'd be helpful. <laughs> but he's had, <laughs> I'm in the wrong thing. Here we go. He's had uh, in his three games that he's played so far, he's been able to um, 15 shots that he was able to save. He, of course, has unfortunately given up four goals. But I feel like a lot of those goals were things where he's <clears throat> been able to learn from them. And it was it was like some young mistakes or also just the fact that defense was at times looking like cones. Um, so I'm not putting them all on Oliver that he was able to give up some of those MLS goals, but in MLS play specifically, you know, I, I think he's been great so far. You know, this is what you expected from him. You needed somebody steady that would come in and be a strong backup keeper. Yeah. HC, what's up? What's I do up, love HC? yogurt. I'm a big yogurt fan myself too. HC actually. is a constant during <laughs> Flyers oh, post game, yeah. so we appreciate I see that gritty. I see your Flyers icon. <laughs> uh, with Oliver, though, one thing I would say. Uh, but besides him just getting more comfortable in play, Renee, I love the fact that we have a young backup mm-hmm. because, like, look, I know we all killed Joe Bendick, and rightfully so, but the <laughs> thing with Oliver is that he's a young kid, and he has room for improvement. Yeah. And, look, we're all comfortable with Andre. We all know who Andre is, but, I mean, like, yeah. you never know what's going to happen with Andre. I mean, who knows? He has a crazy, crazy end of the season. He gets sold off the year. Like, these things do happen. So oh, no. being able to have, like, that backup right there ready I, is so important. We had that with Matt Freeze for a couple seasons. Everyone knows my love for Matt Freeze. I know. I saw him make a really great save yeah. this weekend. I thought of you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, Love JP. Matt Freeze. <laughs> Matt Freeze is the man. But having now another young incumbent, that'd be, that's so important to have. And that's – the union way. I mean, and having you that, that. Young, those young kids in the future. You need that because now he has a chance. He doesn't have to be the everyday starter. Exactly. But you now get a chance to learn from Andre Blake. You do get that mixture of getting some meaningful minutes. Of course, because of Andre's injury, he had to play more than anybody expected so far. But it makes for days like Saturday that he's ready. Like, I don't know if he's that ready. Grant, it's only been a few games. Right. Um, if he didn't have a chance to, you know, from the start, have to be thrown into the fire. So, it's I don't mind the mistakes he's made because it's allowing him to get that out, get the jitters out, get feeling good. And now if you do need him, you at least know you can rely on him versus him being, you know, buried on the bench. And here we are 30 games into the season. It's like, uh, is Zemla ready or not? So I, I think it's great to start to, like, prepare that next generation of talent. And he's 
Andre's not going to be able to play forever. At that some point, true. the union are going to have to move on to another goalie. I know. But what really helps, though, and why Zemmel had a solid game was just defensively. They were sound. Yeah. Especially that back line. I, I know we on the show, we've been a little critical of Glezis, rightfully so. Um, on that third goal, he was so huge with that reset pass. Yes. That really, first off, we'll talk about Ua in a second, but great run by Ua, as he usually does. <laughs> and he was able to set that cross in for Carranza. But that was all set up by Jakob Glezis. But it wasn't even just that. Mbizo was solid. How about Mbizo? I know. That one-two with Rodriguez and Mosquera. Mosquera took that shot off Zemla. Mm -hmm. um, and and Mbizo had that just that slight touch to get that ball out of the way. It's I the mean, things. He was, that was the best defensive game I've seen from him in a long time. I know. It was impressive. And now it makes me wonder, like, where do you go from here? Obviously, I don't think Jim is the type where he's going to take all of these great performances and just completely throw out the window, you know, what he's been, the, the usual lineup. Because now you're going to get back, obviously, Andre, uh, but Nate, Jack, Jose, you know, how, does, how do you merge and mix what you've seen Saturday with what you know you're getting back and make sure that they're still playing at that high level that we talk about. And when I look at this group, I would I would love for Jim to take some of these, the formation, some of these players, and at the very least, get them involved in the game earlier. You know, if Mark Sanderson's not going to be a starter because you're going to get back a Daniel Gazdag, you're going to get back, you know, Jack McGlynn, he at least needs to be inserted into the game quicker. And Baizo really made it tough. I mean, he showed he truly is that outside back that you can depend on. And so I wonder how much now after that game Saturday, of course, it's just one game, but that's that's the most aggression, movement, firepower we've seen from the union all MLS so far. Yeah. So you've got to take some of these learnings, and these are these guys earned more minutes. So sure. I hope that we see Jeremy Raffanello more. I would like to see Ty Rebo, by the way. <laughs> um, but I'd love to see Jeremy Raffanello more. I'd love to see Marcus Anderson sooner. Chris Donovan even getting him involved, you know, and someone like Daniel Gazdag, someone like Mikel Ua. Make it more. You maybe you'll get more from them if they're playing a little bit less. Little to be honest, I like that. because I did talk to uh, one, a friend of mine that works in the communication department at, with the union, and she was saying how much you know they've just been traveling. And this is not like a report or anything. This is a no brainer. Da -na -na. But she was like, you know, breaking news. <laughs> um, but we were. I was at an event with her this weekend, and we were talking about the team, and she's like, it's just crazy like the off season was so short these guys have traveled so much no, they go for portland they go like third they go down early so they have a day to try to like get caught up to the time zone but then they have to do it all over again and every away game has been a different time zone and it's been a, a long flight and she's like these guys have had to travel so much so soon it's plus insane. of course they had conca gap games before they got knocked out and we don't take into consideration just the fatigue and the wear and tear so the damian lowe's and guys that you want to critique Okay, they still have to go travel again. Yep. Now they're, they're still traveling on international break with their respective teams. That's a lot of mileage on the tank. And now when you're expecting 90-minute performances from them and all that, it just adds up. So getting some fresh guys in sooner hopefully is a great way to kind of mitigate this early amount of uh, large amount of games that they played. Yeah, absolutely. As Jillian is chiming in, certainly makes you feel better about the time Andre, I the know. times Andre is going to be away. Well-deserved recognition for all of it. Ab absolutely. And then you mentioned it, you know, obviously we just, we just had Jamaica, that uh, was a gold cup that, that we had down there. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously you're going to miss him there. We'll miss some time here this upcoming summer as well. So Zumbo's going to get some play. He's going to get some heavy play here and it's going to be some extremely valuable starts, but I mean, that was one of the concerns heading into the season is depth. And I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say, like, it's, it's answered, but yeah. you have some more options now. And more options that we're going to be able to see from. Obviously, you know, you mentioned Marcus Anderson. I mean, everyone knows in this 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 podcast is a Marcus Anderson fan club. We are. <laughs> Literally. I have no problem with saying I am team Marcus. <laughs> He's been playing really <laughs> well. And like I talked about it before, his ability to stretch back lines with the speed and and just his hard work in general, mm -hmm. something you're gonna you're gonna definitely gonna need. But Renee, Jeremy Raffinello on Saturday also a fan really made his his name seen and heard. Um, the Quinn Sullivan goal, he Jeremy took a couple shots from outside, but the mm -hmm. that Quinn Sullivan goal was set up from a Jerry Raffinello long shot, and Quinn was at the right place at the right time and made a great heads up play. But, you know, Jim always talks about, you know, I know a lot of times we like to kill Brujo Martinez for taking those long shots. But there's a reason why Jim was fine with it, because it is hard to defend that. You yeah. know, and, and having that ability to shoot those shots long, it is it's so big. And so you saw that you saw that with Rafinello. But, you know, we talked about 
Gazak. What happens if Gazak's out? What do you use as a backup? Joaquin Torres is now gone. Mm-hmm. Rafinello could mm-hmm. potentially be one of those guys that could be a substitute as a number 10. You can run this formation too. Obviously, this type of formation worked with this type of 4-3-3, 4-4-2, flat, whatever you guys want to call it. But Rafinello, with this play on Saturday, has to be able to play himself into some more minutes. Now, listen, this is Jim Curtin-led team. You cannot just perform in matches. You have to do it as well in practice or in the For week. Sure. But Rafael definitely played himself into some rotation minutes here. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, as even you were mentioning the formation, I know not to circle back to that, but mm-hmm. the 4 4 2 is, is typically one of the easier formations to play. It just simplifies the game. Yeah. And I even wonder how much the team kind of needed that. Like the 4 4 2 is that formation that when you're first learning 11 v 11 and you're just getting started, that's your go to. Like that's, that's the basic. Because it's just, it's very straightforward. Your outside mids get up and down. Your two center mids just work together. Your forwards are twin strikers. You know, it just simplifies the game. And maybe this team needed that. Yeah. Maybe they need to kind of go back to the basics. You bring in some hungry, ambitious guys and a Raffanello and Anderson, um, Baizo even, that are, you know, ready to show what they can do. You simplify the game and you just go out and you just play versus, you know, 4 3 3 and even the 4 4 2 with a diamond midfield just requires more sophistication, more movement, more of a dynamic type of play, but I would love to see, I don't, it doesn't have to be this equal playing time. That's never my thing at all, but I would just love to see these guys get in a little bit sooner. You know, like as okay. much as a Daniel Gazdag and Mikel Ua, I know we've talked about them so many times and how much they're, you know, depending, we're depending on them offensively, but you don't have to depend on them offensively, you know, yeah, even Julian and Carranza, like yeah. you don't have to, I know we've talked about it time and time again, who else can contribute Okay, maybe they're not directly the one finishing, but like you mentioned, Jeremy Raffanello helps create that goal because he takes a chance. He takes a shot from distance. Uh, Marcus Anderson looks to get in behind. I think he was the one fouled. Who was fouled when Jacob Glessness played that ball into uh, their goal? Was. It was Quinn. <laughs> Quinn Sullivan. He takes that chance. He gets brought. That's right, because he was laying on the ground while they were scoring. But you take that chance, you get fouled, it leads to a goal. Like, these are the types of ways you make an impact, not just running around. You need guys that are making plays that directly lead to corner kicks that lead to goals or set pieces or run a play types of goals. And even with all three goals coming off of a rebound and two set pieces, what led to those was very encouraging. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up the 4-4-2 flat because, it, yeah, I mean, like, I I, constantly, I remember back in 2019 going to Serie A over here, Carlo Ancelotti takes over Napoli, and they come from Saudi ball with heavy possession, 4-3-3. Mm-hmm. He wanted a little more defense implements that Napoli team, so he kind of brought in a 4-4-2. You had Insigne and Milik play as two forwards there. Right. And that's that's definitely one way you can – it's it's just more – like you said, it's more simplified. But to the point where, like, getting more minutes at Rafa Yellow, Marcus Anderson, it's all about trust, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And that's something, like, I, I feel like Jim is kind of – I, I don't know Jim's mind exactly, but just seeing it from afar, there have been times like I was bringing up the Anthony Fontana situation, although I wasn't there, but like we saw Anthony produce and we saw Anthony contribute yes. in the attack and wasn't yes. in those consistent minutes, but you got to be able to trust your guys too at some point. Like, yeah, may will there be a match where you may not feel too comfortable putting Marcus Anderson and Jeremy Raphael? Maybe, but those kids are wild cards and sometimes those wild cards can get you that win. And so... I think these kids, the more, and like we talked about with Zemla, mm-hmm. the more you put them in there, the more they're going to get more comfortable. I mean, Rafael looked like a seasoned vet out there. I liked his play. And I liked it. This dude is his, was his first star in ML, or second star in MLS play. It, it's, it, it, he looked, he looked very, very comfortable yeah. in that role right there. So it is, it is definitely really cool to see. Uh, it- it, these players step up. It gives you options. I know we we have talked so much about depth and wanting to see more. And my thing I always say on every show of any team is when you aren't getting the production you need, why not try somebody else? Someone like Ua, for an example, if he's not scoring goals, okay, he did at least get that beautiful assist. If he's not scoring goals, you don't have to play him 90 minutes. You know, you can play him 75 and give somebody else 15 minutes and at least give them a chance. At least try it. It doesn't have to be all or nothing. There's always a way in between. Try these other guys out, especially in this part of the season. This is the time. A, you're keeping your um, 90-minute players fresh. B, you're keeping the competition alive. Mm -hmm. If they know they have to compete for their spot day in and day out that much more versus it just being a guarantee they're going to be locked for 90 minutes, watch how guys start to play a little bit harder. And then you're keeping the reserves motivated that next player up mentality. You never know when your name's going to get called on. Now you're going to be ready if you're Jeremy Raffanello, if you're 
you know, Olivier and Baizo, if you're Marcus Anderson, Chris Donovan, that whenever needed, you can step on the pitch and help. And you cannot just go 11, 12 guys all season. Yeah. So I'm hoping that Jim Curtin, who absolutely was on the hot seat a bit coming into this week, now him, talks, him yeah. and his staff have more of an, an awareness of, wait a minute, the level of play doesn't drop off at all. You know, these are guys that are just going to go out there, work their butts off, play aggressive, compete for everything, leave it all on the field for as, as long as you need them out there. So why not get them involved more often? And now you want to get to a point where you can rotate JP 15, 16 guys that I would love for the union to be there. We're game in and game out. It's not just, you know, 11 or 12. You're able to get multiple players in. And that's why when I look at a team like Gotham FC and the NWSL, that's what helped them down the stretch win a championship. That's what, when you look at March Madness, a lot of teams, you know, a reason why a middle Tennessee lost to LSU, for example, they didn't have the depth. Someone yeah. gets in foul trouble. Now what? Now LSU goes on a run and the game opens up. You need to have the ability to, as the season progresses, injuries, fatigue, no foul trouble in soccer, but maybe someone <laughs> gets a red card. Who knows? Uh, that you can have players that can seamlessly step in and the level doesn't drop off and they're ready to go. Let's talk about oh, that. Fingers real crossed. Let's talk about that real quick because, oh man, it, it, <laughs> it was a little unsettling hearing some of the conversations, not only from the fan base, but some of the media talk about Jim Curtin on a potential hot seat if they were to lose to Portland. Here's the thing. Yeah. Like, if they were to lose to Portland and have, like, a bad run of form here this month, like, I would understand if they fired Jim because at the end of the day, this is a business no, and it's unfortunately no. scapegoats it to are a thing. But, like, I can't <laughs> look at the union's front of form and completely blame it on Jim. You decided as a front office to run it back for a third straight season with the same manager, mm -hmm. who, by the way, who's done a really good job, two-time manager of the year as well, it, it, to me, Renee, like if they were to go in that route, it'd be I would be so upset with that because Jim has done everything he possibly can with what he's had to work with. And I mean, like, that's what you're supposed to do in business. Like he, 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 they gave him the responsibility. He did the most with the, what he can. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's taking us an MLS Cup final. Like it's I, I thought that conversation was was honestly a little bit ridiculous, but I get it. I mean, like it, it, when you look at it. That that's that's what people are gonna think of that because we've been so close and the yeah. the start of the season this year has not been the greatest. Granted, Saturday was great. Like honestly, like Saturday made us kind of forget like the start of the season. Yeah, what what problems? <laughs> <laughs> but like the fact that that was starting to become a conversation was wild to me. Well, uh, this is notoriously a team that's fallen short. It is a team that has has gotten. All the way to the MLS Cup, won the Supporter Shield, all the way in CONCACAF and, you know, CCL and different tournaments that they've done really well in, but haven't been able to bring home other hardware outside of the Supporter Shield. And so it's much like Oliver Zemla. I don't blame him for the goals. I don't blame Jim Curtin for the losses fully. There are some things he could do differently. Like Jeremy Raffanello, for example, has only played three games since 2022. He's 23 years old. He's not 17, 18. He's only played three games since 2022. Zero in 2022, by the way. Um, two this season, one last season, and he played a total of 12 minutes last season. Maybe he wasn't ready in 2022 or even last season, but he's ready now. Yeah. So I would blame Jim, for example, if Jeremy's not getting minutes. Okay. Like Marcus, for example, we've seen do well, and he continuously has been getting minutes. You know, I would expect that after Saturday, J Jeremy should get more minutes, whatever that may look like. So that is, that is his role as a coach, is to find ways within your team to manage guys so that you can get the best out of them and get more depth and more pieces. The actual addition or lack thereof, I should say, that's not on him. That's not his job to, to go out and you know figure out a way to bring guys in on loans and trades or whatever else he wants to do. So that part is he has been dealt a losing hand in some, in some cases, but... There is talent there still, as we saw from there Saturday. Is. So now, not only does this get him off the hot seat, but I think it puts him on a different hot seat, to be honest. The, like, I think it gets him off the hot seat of, we've had the same group, we're running it back. But now it puts him on the hot seat of, wait a minute, we saw six starters missing. You have a whole different lineup, a whole different formation, and you played your best l soccer of the league thus far. Mm -hmm. A 3-1 convincing victory against a good Portland team. Yeah. The best team they've played in the MLS all season, by the way. Portland's better than Austin. Portland's better than Chicago. Portland's better than supporting Kansas City. And the union looked much better. And I'm not going to say perfect because there were still some there areas. So if you have that ability, you have that talent, that needs to be, as you mentioned, now that's where the bar is. 
See, they're such an they're in such a tough spot because like realistically, this is a top five team overall in the MLS, and that's the way I look at the Union. Yeah. But are they good enough to be the top team? And that's always been the that's been the question here for the past couple of years. And to be quite honest with you, that that's not up to Jim, in my honest opinion. That's up to the what the squad is that Jim has to work mm. with. That's kind of where we're at. HC is Ted Lasso available? According to Apple TV, <laughs> he is available. He is, he left. He 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 left. Um, we need Ted. Call in Ted Lasso. Yeah, he left AFC <laughs> Richmond, so he is available right now. The uh, Beard, uh, Roy, Ken, and Nate are st- running the ship over at, at Richmond. So I don't know if, if Jim happens to get get sacked, maybe we will we'll call Ted Lasso. Should we? Uh, it might be too expensive Lasso though. In for Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, Ted might be Ted might be out of the budget there. We'll we'll, we'll have to wait and see there. But while we wait to see uh, the if Ted Lasso will come back, why don't we sit back and chill a little bit, ladies and gentlemen, with one of our sponsors here today in Coors Light. Ah. Listen, guys, you know what this week is? I know Renee and Tyler will tell you what this week is. Phillies baseball is back. What do we- I'm actually really, I don't know if you guys understand. I'm really excited for Phillies baseball to be I'm back. I'm really excited. So with that, that means some. <laughs> I'm really excited. <laughs> That's so dry. <laughs> I'm excited. <laughs> I like baseball. <laughs> <laughs> but with that, guys, that means daytime tailgates here, Woo! ladies and gentlemen. So what better than to choose our sponsor in Coors Light. Always stay chill with Coors Light here, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, and the best part about Coors Light, guys, is that not only is it refreshing, it's light as well, but they make it very accessible for you to own a six-pack of of Coors Light. Get it delivered straight to your house right now. It's very simple. All you got to do right now is go to CoorsLight.com slash P-H-L-Y soccer. Again, that's CoorsLight.com slash P-H-L-Y soccer. I'm going to be choosing Coors Light for my tailgate preferences for sporting events and concerts as well. So you guys check it out as well. Again, that's CoorsLight.com slash P-H-L-Y soccer. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Yes, and as we're talking about big moves and discounted prices and all the great things here in Philly, let's go to a place that gives you some Brooklyn-style bagels made right here in Philly with the Philly love. It's that mom-and-pop shop feel. That's Bagels & Co. They've got huge bagels, the largest bagels in Philly. Um, They also have, with those Brooklyn-style bagels, a lot of variety, 15 to 20 different types of bagels you can choose from daily. They've got seasonal bagels. They've got, so they had Valentine's Day and St. Patrick's Day, which is wild that those holidays have already passed and we've got more holidays coming up before you know it, we're going to be celebrating memorial day we're going to be celebrating easter this weekend we're going to be celebrating uh fourth of july bagels and co always has seasonal bagels and then as if it doesn't get any better they've got about 30 different flavors of cream cheeses and schmears so they have seasonal cream cheeses they've got philly sports specific ones you know phillies Sixers, Union, Flyers, Eagles, specific cream cheeses you can check out. And then also, most importantly, not only do you get large variety of bagels and cream cheeses, you get all of that at a great price. It's affordable. And the way that today's prices are, as things are continuing to skyrocket and go through the roof, They've got affordable prices that don't require you to break the bank to get that pork roll and egg sandwich <laughs> or that delicious cream bagel with cream cheese. So head on over to Bagels & Co. for the best Brooklyn-style bagels made right here in Philly. You can check out the website. It's thebagelsandco.com. Find a location nearest you. I know there's one right near us that I drove by the other day that I ordered from, too. Find the closest location nearest you and check out the Bagels & Co. We love their food. And you can too. Delicious bagels. And now I'm getting hungry again. Yeah, absolutely. You cannot go wrong with a bagel from Bagels and Co., <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. That picture always gets me every time, too. It's that's great marketing, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. The, che- the egg just, you know, I almost said cheese because that's gross. The egg just <laughs> hanging off the bagel, the pork roll. They have so many different slices of pork roll. It's not just one. You never get a sandwich and they just have like a slice or two of, of, the, I hate of that. the meat. I hate you that. want like lots of pork roll on there. I want it to be loaded. I want to like pick it up and it be falling out. Come on, guys. Hook us That's up with all. the meat there. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Now that I'm getting hungry again, um, JP, there was a lot going on this weekend. And I know we could probably talk all day about the union. And listen, I'd love to, especially when they win. It makes it that much easier to talk about them. HC, Jillian, everybody else, hit that thumbs up button. Join the conversation because not only did we get a win for the union, JP, but the U.S. men's national team brought yeah. home some hardware and the union the Union 2 had a great game, too. Uh, this right. was a great weekend of soccer. Great weekend. Let's, let's start off with the Union 2. Obviously, the big news was that Kevin Sullivan made his his professional debut, as they are Ooh. calling it there. 
He had a nice assist to Sal Oliva's goal here in the 81st minute. I'll buy, I'll buy the way. It was a beautiful that was a ball great, fed down. Great pass, great finish. You saw the touch. You definitely saw the touch. So obviously, listen, Union 2 have, has a lot of hype right now, as they deserve it for sure. But all eyes are on Caven Sullivan. It, from what it looks like, by the way, the fact that Fabrizio Romano is on top of Caven Sullivan <laughs> in, in his play and his contract negotiation mm. is absolutely wild. But he just tweeted out seven hours ago here today. Man City are preparing final or formal documents to sign deal for Kevin Sullivan, and he will join the club in the future years here. And of course, it's all done, but it's a matter of time for him to sign there. So it's it's cool. It's really cool. It's really cool seeing a Union player uh, that's going to be playing for Manchester City, one of the biggest clubs here in the world. The hype is real here, ladies and gentlemen. And um, I want to give a quick shout out to Bridge Brigade. They have now they now have merch. It's the Union Two's official supporters group. We have a supporters group wow. for Union Two. How many other clubs have that? Yeah, that's right. Probably. Only only in that. Philly. Only in <laughs> Philly. But now all eyes are in Caven, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So make sure if you guys aren't already, make sure you guys check out Bridge Brigade, and make sure you guys go to Union Two games. They're really cheap, and you can watch the future of the United States there. I know it's it's wild because when you think about the fact he's only 14 years old yeah. and he's just making his first professional game this past weekend and he goes right in and gets an assist. I still want I'm I'm excited to see more from how he how he plays and how he continues to develop because it is hard. I know people were think we're talking about like different names Freddie Adu and different I names over the year out. and people always compare and I don't like that. It's not oh. fair to do. He's not them, you know, but I think hopefully he can learn from, you know, everybody's experiences and past and careers and you know, navigate his his own way because at the end of the day, to me, not a lot of people get to be professional athletes. It's really, really difficult. And you know what else? Last week you brought up the really good point about him being a kid and let's allow yes. him being a kid. This past weekend I watched the Serena v uh, Venus Williams oh, uh, biopic with Will Smith. Yeah. Great watch, by the way, if you guys haven't. And just seeing Richie Williams emphasize allowing his daughters to be kids. Mm -hmm. It was so hard not to think about the situation I know. here. I know. Allow Kevin to be a kid. And, and listen, he's not going to go overseas until 16, so he's going to have these year and a half here to be a kid, mm -hmm. be acclimated with the Union 2. I think that's so important here because, listen, we, we love Kevin. We want him to be the star of the U.S. five, ten years down the line. But in order to get there, he's got to be a human being. He's, gotta be he's a got kid, to be a kid, guys. He's got to. It's that simple. There. And it is, it is remarkable when you think about the stories because as much as we talk about the Freddie Adus, there are the Venus and Serena Williams. There are, you know, even like the Jackson 5 and like across all different sports, music, entertainment, acting. Like there's been a lot of stories, unfortunately, that haven't turned out good, but there have been some really good ones also. Yeah. So for Kevin and the Sullivan family in general, I feel like they... As long as they're all, as long as they get it and they're there and their support, such a big year. And so I'm hoping that, you know, as we talk about even like a Ted Lasso, you know, one day maybe we'll get a Captain American, Kevin Sullivan story and we'll be able to be like, <laughs> oh, I remember when he was 14 and everybody was, you know, like, wow, we're talking about a 14 year old. But yes, we're talking about a 14 year old talent. Like it's not, he's, he's a very good soccer player. So it's exciting because when you look at the growth of soccer in the United States and even on the men's side, because the women's side has been consistently at the top internationally, World Cup Olympics, things like that, the men haven't. And so this is a huge step for even just not the union, not going to play in the MLS, but not the union, but even U.S. men's soccer to hopefully be at a point where they are competing, you know, on the national stage more consistently outside of, of course, three peating in CONCACAF Nations League. That is, that is that is very true. I mean, I'm, I'm curious. Like, I was too young for Kobe and Mike Trout, but has there ever been like a local teenage Philadelphia athlete that's been hyped like Kevin Sullivan? Out of Philly, maybe. maybe well, there there were. Maybe there was people Davis like um, back in uh, what's his name that played in the NBA? Oh my gosh, I'm like his son's at Kentucky now. Oh, uh, Dewan Wagner. Dewan Wagner, like he, Ball, like, like there have West. been. There's gosh. been a lot of people. Some have gone on to actually reach those stages and some have it but like a dewan wagner was literally at a high school with that, that guy crazy. yeah um but also his dad played and now his son plays like there usually there's 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 something else to it but we do we have seen that in philly you yeah. know we've we've seen the the lebron james type stories right here in our very own backyard <laughs> that's very true very true <laughs> as tyler rolls his eyes because i always have to find a way to add lebron in <laughs> lebron james but um is lebron it but we move forward to the USMNT. Big win for wow. the, for the Americans there. Um, I'll let you talk about the game, and I'll talk about the the off the field shenanigans of oh, this gosh. matchup. Oh gosh, yeah, it's a shame because we have to even talk about the off the field shenanigans. But 
Congrats to the U.S. men's national team. They won their third straight Nations League championship. And with that, Gio Reyna scored. Tyler Adams. Did you see that goal by Tyler Adams? That was disgusting. It was like a a knuckleball driven perfectly. Like you saw it from so many different angles and the slow-mo. Oh, it was a beauty. Placed it perfectly. Picked out the pocket in the top corner. Finished it. Buried it. Goal. But listen, for the U.S. men's national team to now win three straight Nations League titles, uh, remarkable. It's it's incredible. I know Greg Berhalter was speaking specifically after about, you know, just the excitement and how Copa America is where you're going to see the guys really be able to focus. And, you know, now it's a big opportunity. Like, they're, they've, they've got bigger things to accomplish. Like, this is just them skimming the surface for what they're looking to do. But I think it's a great step as we talk confidence and momentum and things uh, that to be able to have the U.S. men's national team with some hardware and taking care of some business, finally. It, it, it is an exciting time to be an American soccer fan. Um, but unfortunately, there was um, some ugly scenes uh, yeah. last night. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I really feel like the this matchup, like you should play without fans. Because really? watching... I know like, people are saying that. Watching like these fans interact is so disgusting. I know. Because like... For one, like you have like the Mexican fans. And listen, if you're a Mexican fan, you have every right to be frustrated. Like your organiz- your federation is literally running the team into the ground. And I understand your frustration. But throwing things on the pitch, never, ever, ever there is a right time to do that. Like you just don't do it. Obviously, like uh, that unfortunately carries over into MLS play because obviously we have great Mexican fans here in this league. Mm-hmm. You know, we saw an MLS Cup, 10-22, throwing beer on Jack Elliott as we scored the goal. Like, that, to me, drives me up a freaking wall. Yeah. That is no place. And then, of course, you have, you know, American fans throwing racist stuff to Mexican fans. So, like, both fans are seem like they're always in the wrong. Like, we can't, like, and we always forget, like, why we're there. We're fans of, of a sport. We're it's fans sport. of a game. And the thing is, like, you should have your national pride, but it doesn't mean you have to be ugly and, 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 and do d- disgusting things like throwing yeah. beer or saying racist stuff. Like, it's honestly so embarrassing because I think in, on the pitch, this is such a fun rivalry. Mm-hmm. And obviously it has so much meaning behind the soccer. But like I just hate the all the, like the off the field stuff. Like it shouldn't happen. Yeah. It, it's just so disgusting to see. It makes me so upset to be honest with you, Renee. But it unfortunately it, it does happen here. And I don't know what I don't know what CONCAF does because obviously there's a lot of money tied into both these teams. Well, that's the thing. You have people that are traveling from all over the world to come see the, the yeah. matches. And it's unfortunate because there are people that struggle to separate sports from reality. Like, at the end of the day, we all love sports. It sh- it's not and should not be life or death. It's not something to go and be disrespectful and arguing about. Like, there are multiple ways to enjoy sports, how you cover it, how you watch it, how you talk about it, how you play it, that it shouldn't become this thing of, like, us versus you In a negative way. Like, I don't mind the pride. I don't mind you chanting and singing and having flags and painting and, you know, even having fun against opponents, kind of getting into it. But there's a line. There's got to be a line somewhere. And this is not the first time this has happened. And for whatever reason, when you look at the history of soccer, this sport notoriously has had so many instances about this same type of actions of things being thrown on the pitch, things being said, racial slurs, you know, all types of stuff. And I I don't know where you draw the line. And unfortunately, like you mentioned, there's no easy way to do this. Like you stop the game. That doesn't help. That doesn't help anything. If that hurts the players, the fans are going to, are still going to do that. I mean, stop the game and send them out. But like, how do you actively balance like how you, you know, put instill any sort of consequences Because it's a whole group of, it's a whole stadium of people. So like you're mentioning, I don't know if it gets to a point of like, if you're heard saying something, you get thrown out. But now you have people, as we know, you're drinking and all this stuff and you have security trying to like throw people out. That's going to lead to an escalation. There's no easy way to do it unless, as you mentioned, you take away fans. But we've already had sports without fans. And they still came back. They should be excited to be there after the pandemic. But no, they're back to the same foolishness. And I'm glad you made the disclaimer, though, because it's not just Mexico. I know Mexico was the ones that obviously were heard saying this. But it does go both ways. You know, there's there's there are U.S. fans that are that are, you know, antagonizing it and poking the bear and Mexico. then with the chance completely wrong, I'm not saying it's okay, but there just needs to be this better level of respect. You know, go to a game and just enjoy drinking, eating, cheering, whatever it is you're doing, 
in a way that doesn't disrespect the other person. So right. I'm never, I never like when people go that far in sports to like now make it personal, now make it disrespectful. It's not that serious. Like we can all just enjoy what we're doing and have fun talking about sports, cheering on sports without it becoming this like thing where you're hitting below the belt. Literally, we don't need that. Literally, the soccer that I fell in love with brings people together. Yeah, sports like, should bring people together. I love being in the tree at Subaru Park. And hanging out with an Algerian soccer fan, mm -hmm. hanging out with a Costa Rican soccer fan, and an Italian soccer fan. And we're all there, even though we come from different backgrounds and cultures, but we're all there yeah. because we love this game. And that's the beauty of soccer. It's it's a universal language. It Everyone it speaks is. it. Everyone loves it. And so, like, stuff that happened, like, Renee, I would love to watch USA Mex because I think that the history behind yeah. it is awesome. Oh. But I don't want to be a part of that culture. I don't want to be a part of that fan culture because that's that. No one should want to go through that. I mean, I saw For pictures of, of an American fan who had g g I was gashing blood from his face. Mm. I don't even want to know how that happened. I, I hope he's fine. But that's just stuff like you just don't want to see. No, you don't. Um, Copa America is coming up here. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe there might that's be a possibility it. U.S. and Mexico meet again. I don't think it'll happen, but. Um, this is stuff that you kind of have to keep an eye out for. And I, I just hate that that's stuff that does happen there. Yeah, I agree. And that's why I know like Greg Berhalter, Greg Berhalter, excuse me, was talking about, you know, the focus now on Copa America and moving forward. You know, they're not done yet. And that's where you should be able to just talk about soccer. We should be able to just talk about the game. We shouldn't have to even have any discussion or pictures about things going on. Uh, it's, it's ruthless. It's sad. It's disrespectful. It's disgraceful. And so hopefully there is some, I'm sure there's conversation being done because it does affect Everyone's safety, yes. fans, players, coaches, it affects officials, it affects everybody's safety. And there needs to be a way to be able to instill some sort of realistic changes that will help. But yeah. I know, Jillian, you're mentioning in the chat that goal was like a blue hose. Yes, that was a, <laughs> it was very Jose Martinez-esque of like, nice. just take a, you know, beautiful chance shot from distance. Um, I know, Jose, you're also mentioning the congrats to Damien oh, and absolutely. Andre for sure. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's great. This is what we love about the international break. It's a great chance. You saw Nate Harrell score a goal. You saw Damian and Andre do well. You saw the U.S. men's national team and Aronsons are, are out there, you know, doing well. So it's great to see when you have these international breaks, Nations League, whatever the break may be for, to see guys representing. And then, of course, we're, as we're giving our congrats and all of our positives, Jacob Glessness cel celebrates a birthday today. He's Happy joined birth the 30-plus side. I know we were tweeting about it. Old. We tweeted about it earlier. He's now in, he's 30 years old today. He's, <laughs> wait, are you surprised like he should be younger or older? I'm confused. I, I, mean, I can't listen, read you. I'm not tuning on my horn. Listen, never that. But I, 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 he looks way older than me. He's a hard 34. I mean, 30. <laughs> That's just shocking. Like, I can't 34. believe we're the same he age. He was born in 94, like, is, is what I was about to say. But you know when people say, like, you're a, a, a hard 30? Yeah. <laughs> like, he definitely looks older. He definitely just, like, see, I feel like his mannerisms and stuff. It's maybe yeah. the Norwegian. He's a very, like, strong, big guy. Yeah, yeah maybe that's the it. Norwegian. Nah, I don't know. I definitely don't feel 30, that's for sure. Yeah, he's younger than all of us. That's crazy. I know. Happy birthday, Aka. Happy birthday. I'll 30 see you years old today. Welcome to <laughs> see you in Nodo. We'll get the bottle service going at Noto just for you. <laughs> That's how we roll. Not. But it is great. Welcome to the other side of the hill. This is like, you know, this is like the minor hill before you get to the big hill. Big one. Which is 60, not 50. I love 30. <laughs> I'll, I'll say that. I, I love being 30. It's, 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 been, it's been a fun week so far being 30, ladies and gentlemen. I know. I was gonna say your whole week into it. I know it, it you is. You guys are basically still... birthday, but oh, me, you, and Jacob all celebrating birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> so any, I'll just I'll just put it out there for anybody that was unaware. Um, my birthday was this month. Jacob's birthday was this month, and then JP's just happened to be this month. Um, so we were talking about it before the show. We're all celebrating a birthday. We're all celebrating birthdays here. Half birthdays and for some of us. <laughs> Real birthdays for others. But we're all there. We do. 31 and a half, 30, and you're like 30 in a weekend. 30 in a weekend. Jacob is 30 on the dot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Happy birthday to Jakob Glasses. That's for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. As we as we wrap up here, Renee, any last words for everyone, all the dupers out there? <sighs> do you guys feel that sense of calm? Do you hear that? I do that? feel better this week. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like there's been a weight taken off of our shoulders. Seriously. Because they're, listen. Now we can finally say the Philadelphia Union are undefeated. Proudly. They've been undefeated in MLS play. See why they're frustrating? I know. Because they're undefeated. One, All this and they're three, undefeated. Whoa. They're still undefeated, guys. But we couldn't really appreciate them being undefeated and enjoy it because they were also winless. 
But now they finally got that bagel done and gone out of the wind column and they've got one. Now we can say, oh, the union are one of the only, uh, there's not a lot of undefeated teams. But um, there's the union. I think this week's undefe- team are, I'll have to double check. They have won something. I don't mm-hmm. know if it's a loss or if it's. Cincinnati is still undefeated. They're off to an, a great start with three wins. And t- of Speaking course. of great starts, actually, this is one thing I do want to share before we go. Because uh, mm-hmm. we were talked about him last week a little bit. And he's now got, I believe, five goals in five games. Okay. Dijon uh, Jovel- Jovelchik. I, I had his name down last time and I just, it went off my head. Um, Jovacic, okay. uh, he's, he's definitely having quite a start to the season so far. Um, he's now got five goals in five games, uh, one goal per game, which is a, an MLS record for goals in consecutive games to start the season. That was set back in 98 by Brian McBride. And wow. Jovacic has tied that. He's been on a tear. He's come off, he's come into this role of his own, uh, with with LA Galaxy and has been a really bright spot of like just cr- stepping on the pitch and scoring. So there's a, there's a name to keep an eye on because uh, he's really and I'm gonna I'm gonna get back to his official pronunciation because I know I just said it wrong. Jovalich. But yeah, it's it's Jovalich. Um, Dayan Jovalich. There it is. Dayan because you don't say the J. It's Dayan. Dayan. That's Day-in. right. Dayan. Scoring goals. So, Dan Jovalich, keep an eye on him, guys, because he's been on a tear scoring goals. And the Union are, too, because they're also undefeated. FC Cincinnati is undefeated. How's um, Miami in second? I'm, I'm, like, looking at it. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> they've got – well, they're tied <laughs> for second wins. because there were 10 points with this the Red Bulls, Columbus, Toronto. Toronto's, Toronto's been playing really Toronto's well. been impressive. They're another team to keep an eye on right now. I have been. Uh, but, yeah, I think the Union, for the East – them and the and Cincinnati, the only two undefeated. And then for the West, guess who's undefeated on the West? That the Union play this Saturday. Another big test. Minnesota sits with ten points, also with three wins and a tie, and no losses. So it's a battle of two undefeated. Look at that. Look at that. How That's that insane. the narrative changes. Now we've got Saturday a battle of two undefeated teams in Minnesota and Philadelphia. It should be That's a lot awesome. of fun. Uh, they they got uh, I forget his name already. The we'll, we'll obviously look deeper oh, God, into Minnesota yeah. this week, but um, he was an assistant coach for Manchester United, and so coming over to Minnesota United, he, the, the, his presence has clearly been felt as we're going to face off mm-hmm. against three win and one draw Minnesota United, while we are the one draw and or we're the yeah we're one win and three draw. Yeah, they reversed us. That's a good point. This but there's insane. also so there's five teams undefeated right now. Obviously. The Union and, and Minnesota play this weekend. So we'll see who's the last team that's undefeated standing. Will it be the Union? Mm, Stay we tuned. shall see. Finding out soon. <laughs> we that's shall see. <laughs> we'll definitely talk about that with everything else with the Philadelphia Union. Make sure you guys stay tuned for all things here at PHLY Union, part of PHLY Sports. Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe. We will see you on the next one for Tyler's. Actually, I do have one more thing, JP. Okay. I'm so sorry. I know Tyler's going to shoot me for five. He's like, Renee, you better wrap this thing up. We've got (laughs) (laughs) got exciting things on the horizon. I just want to plug some things because Thursday is not only opening day, but cuz it's back. The Gargano show, Anthony Gargano show launches Thursday. JP is going to be a part of that show. (laughs) So while you were plugging our, um, we're going to be doing a lot of things down at Bet Parks Casino in South Philly. So you're going to be there live I'll with there. Anthony Gargano for the, for because. his show dropping 9 a.m. Thursday live. We're going to be there as well that same day because of, with opening day, we've got pregame show, watch party, postgame show. So, yeah, stay tuned for all the exciting things. And, of course, we'll have our preview of Saturday's matchup for you guys dropping soon. We'll bring you guys uh, a nice, you know, some nice information to look forward to going into Saturday's matchup for versus Minnesota. So we do have great things on the horizon. It's that an you guys exciting can check week out. in PHLY. Absolutely. I can't link. We got <sighs> opening day, causes opening day too on Thursday. Big opening day here on Thursday. So yes, make sure you guys are subscribed to PHLY Sports because we have a lot of a great lot. things coming up here for you guys. So again, for Tyler Julie behind the glass, <laughs> Renee Washington, I'm JP Sapata. <laughs> and we're telling you guys to enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> Dupont. Bye. <laughs> we all silly like the mayor.